Hi there, Jamie Keat here tonight at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great night tonight. Tonight, I'm taking a look at Krita. I'm gonna do a beginner's tutorial on it. It's a great free program. So if you have uh, used Photoshop, great program, but you have to pay for it, this is completely free. You can download it for Mac or Windows, uh, and it is very, very good. So I'm gonna run through a tutorial here, a beginner's tutorial to get you started on Krita. If you're looking maybe for other options, I have this other video that it shows the top five uh, Photoshop alternatives. I'll put the link either up in the cards or down below in the description. So click on that. If this doesn't work for you, check out some of the other ones on that. So let's get started tonight on this tutorial with Krita. To download Krita, just go to krita.org. I'll put the link down below in my description so you can click on it and bring you right here. You can see uh, right here, go ahead and click on it. It's good with Windows, Linux, or Mac. Click on this and then just go ahead and use the installer. I'm using Windows tonight. I've used it on my Mac and it works great. I'm gonna just close this down or minimize this and I have Krita right on my desktop, uh, a shortcut here. So I'm just gonna open this up here and then um, I'm just gonna go and show you kind of the, the layout of this. So when it first opens up, you'll notice it kind of, it's close to a Photoshop feel, uh, feel with maybe the layout with the toolbars on the side if you've used that. Uh, you can quickly change if you want the colors different here you can see under the settings we do have different themes I'm under uh, the Krita dark one right now but you can see if you change it how the colors uh, quickly change if you want it more the uh, the darker or the or the lighter themes on it so if I pick a, a bright one you can see it's like that so I'm just gonna go back to uh, the dark theme that I had here that I started with I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document here and I'm gonna drag a file in here too just to show you how to do this uh, there's a number of different ways you can do this recent files anything that you've worked on already they'll be right here we can go ahead and open a file or create a new file same thing with this uh, button up here we can go ahead and create a new document we also have it under new so I'm just going to be working from the middle here uh, create new one but I like how you can I'm just going to change this and I'm going to drag a file right in here so I'm going to drag a image but I'm also going to create just from a blank uh, template too so I can drag this right in here to open it we have the Eiffel Tower I got the pictures from a royalty free site Pexels uh, great place if you want to get some royalty free pictures uh, to work with I can put the link down below to that also so we uh, I'm gonna go ahead and now create a document so I'm gonna have two different documents open now in this case I'm gonna create a thumbnail with this one for this video so I'm gonna make this at 1920 pixels by 1080 I'm just gonna keep the resolution at 72 and this orientation you can see under content here I can do a few different things uh, with the background color so if I wanted it uh, to if I knew what color I wanted to start with I can go ahead and click this and then uh, modify this and uh, drag it around the wheel or choose different colors here I'm gonna actually leave this at white right now I could if you wanted it at a different uh, transparency you can bring this all the way down if you wanted to start it with transparent uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit create right now and I have two different things open I have this image over here and I have this uh, blank one that I'm gonna be working on first to show you some of the cool brushes and different effects that you can add with text and everything. Another adjustment that you can make here, uh, I'm gonna actually change the size of my toolbar. I'm just gonna right click on this one and I'm gonna make this a little larger and I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better uh, and you can also do this with this size when you bring it over uh, you can see how I can resize it I'm just gonna leave this like this so now we're getting uh, ready to start uh, doing some designing here uh, let's move to the next part the first couple of tools I want to show you are the zoom and the pen because I'll be using them back and forth all the time and it's down here. So the zoom tool, now if I click on this, I can hold control down on uh, for Windows and if I hold that, you can see how it went to minus. If I click, I go out. 
with the mouse I'm using, I tend to just use the scroll of uh, the uh, wheel on it, and I can go back and forth on it too. The other thing is the pan. So a lot of times, if you just want to grab a picture, now if I use that, I can bring this around in different places. So for example, if I go to my other picture, I can zoom up here using my wheel or this, or I can pan around just by grabbing it. And if I wanted to keep it zoomed up, I can move it around. So just some important features to know. And also down at the very bottom, you can see there's the uh, percentage that I can adjust and zoom into. So just a few different ways uh, to move around. So I'm going to go back to my blank one with the white here. And I'm just going to go ahead and actually just get into the brushes right away and to show you how they work because they're uh, quite fun to play with. And the brush is right here. Now I could be changing the brush in a few different ways. I can be uh, changing them. I have all the brushes down here, but I'm going to be clicking from right here. So if I have the brush selected and I go ahead and click this, you can see all the brushes are right here. Now this right here isn't a brush. This is an eraser. So if I hover over, you can see it's the eraser circle. If I go over to, well, let's say this one right here, the airbrush. So I'm going to click on this one and I go down and you can see it's quite large. If I hold it down, like so. Now the reason it's so big is this is set at 600 here. So I might want this a lot smaller. So if I adjust that down, you can see now it's a lot smaller. So you can always undo your uh, the different things that you've done. You have your back arrow right here to undo the history. You also have uh, undo history over here. So if I go ahead and click, I can go back in time uh, to get back to the blank also like this. So this way you can actually jump a bunch of different steps to it. Take a look at the other brushes too. There's lots to choose from. So if I was going to just pick something like the pen here, you can see as I draw, it's very smooth to use. I can always switch and do the eraser tool. So if I go back, like I showed you before, this is the eraser and I can quickly erase things. And if I wanted a larger size, I can adjust it like so. Uh, there's lots of different ones to choose from. If you want to make a color change, all I have to do is click on the color and I can go ahead. So if I was going to pick red, hit OK. You can see now, make sure I'm on my brusher, not I'm on the eraser still. So if I go ahead and click and now if I draw, I have my uh, different color here. So you can quickly make all these adjustments to this. Uh, the other thing that you can do, these are all uh, saved, these brushes. So if I go ahead on the pen that I'm on, if I open it, you can see you can make adjustments. So if there was something, an adjustment that you wanted to make to that type of brush, you can do that and then you can save that and you can go back to it and work with it again. So you can get the brushes just the way you want. I'm not making any changes to the ones I have here, but do take a look at all the different ones here. So there's lots of cool brushes. As you go through, you can see the different drawing types. And if you're an artist, uh, you'll be able to draw really well with uh, this program here. So you can see all the different styles. And again, change the size of the brush and just have some fun with, uh, with all of them to create some great artwork. So if you wanted to quickly change your background, and in my case I was using white and you didn't want it, I have red selected here. I'm going to use the fill bucket so I can go ahead and just use it like this and go ahead, click on it, and I can change the whole background. Now I'm on the second layer here too, what I changed, and I like to kind of do these things in different layers. Uh, I can go ahead and click this eye and hide the layer. I didn't delete it. All it is is hidden here, so I can show it. So it's always good to turn layers on and off to see uh, just maybe if you're adding a test and you're adding more layers, and I'll show that in a moment. So if I go back, I'm just going to go back a couple steps and get rid of the fill. I could also use something like a gradient. Now the gradient that's selected is this one. So what that means, if I go ahead and pull across like this, you can see I just did a gradient with those colors. So I'm just going to go back a step. If I wanted something else, you can see there's these uh, different ones that are selected here as I drag across 
like so. And it depends on how, if I do it really small, how it changes depending on how much I drag it uh, through it. So if I go back up here and if I go to hit add, I can create my own too. If I just go ahead and uh, I could click more uh, gradient stops in it so where it changed. So if I go ahead and where this is red and I click on this, maybe I want, and I'm gonna be random with the colors here. You can see how I uh, changed that, hit close, and that's the gradient that's there and I can pull it across and apply it the way I want. Now, if you wanted to apply a color or fill it to a certain area on this, what you can do is use a selection tool. So these are your selection tools. And I'm just gonna use uh, in this tutorial here, just some of the simple ones uh, with the rectangle one and the elliptical. So if I draw a selection area, and now if I go, for example, to my fill, I can fill within that area. Now, same thing with the gradient tool. I could use this, if I go to the gradient again and pull through, it's just gonna be in that area. So if you want a certain area, you can go through and design it uh, through these different ones. Through, you can go ahead and play with these different ones. You can see how some of these you can customize the selection, but then you can add those things right inside the selection. Do remember if you wanna work outside the selection, you need to deselect uh, things or else you won't, won't be able to work. So if I take this brush, Notice I can't draw out here, but I can draw inside. So I would actually have to uh, deselect, and then now I can draw. So with this layer on top of this, if you want to, you can just remove this layer uh, rather than going back in time. I still have my original background. So you can see if I right click on this one, I do have a remove layer and you can always add layers back again just by clicking uh, here, hitting the, the plus here and I have my new layer and I can rename them. So depending on what you are working on, you can just click in here and rename them. So if I want, I'll just go back to layer layer two, you can adjust it like so. When using the shapes that you see here with the elliptical or the, or the elliptical or the rectangle, you got to make sure you have a brush selected for the edges. So for example, right now with the brush I have, uh, I have just the pen one, this one chosen. So if I go and draw with the rectangle one, I'm on layer one right now. If I draw this, it appears like this with the pen. Now, if I wanna move this rectangle uh, around, this is the move tool here. So if I click on this, I can put this in a different place on my canvas anywhere I want. I can also still transform it if I go ahead and choose this one, transform layer. I can go ahead and stretch this out and make this longer. I can actually do all these things. So you can adjust it through here uh, on it. So now the other thing is I'm going to add another one. I'm going to go to the elliptical this time and I'm going to go and change the brush. So I want to use, uh, you know, I'm going to use this one right here. So now if I draw with, and I'm going to change the color uh, to this one. So I go ahead and adjust the color. I'll just pick uh, this red right here. And now if I draw it, you can see how the edges are different because it's based on the uh, brush that I chose. Now, the one thing is if I go to move, notice now they're both connected because they are in the same layer. If I go and transform this, both are connected like this. So make sure you're gonna wanna have different layers for each one. So for example, if I go ahead and delete, let's say I put the rectangle on this one. I'm gonna create a new layer right now. I'll hit just this uh, add layer here. And now I have another one. And so I could name these like before. So if I wanted to call this uh, rectangle here, and I'll just call this one. So it's good to, if you uh, name them, cause it can help things keep, uh, keep things organized and you know what layer that you're on if you can't see what it is right here. So if I go ahead and put elliptical and I'm gonna change the color and I'm just gonna pick blue on this and draw it right over top here. Now the nice thing is now if I go to move, you can see they're not attached anymore and I can do, uh, and I can now adjust it independently of each other. If I wanted to change uh, the rectangle one, I can go ahead and click on the layer and I can move this one. And right now the elliptical is on top. I can actually change these layers around. If I drag this up, you can see now it's on top 
of it. The other thing, as I showed, talked about before, you can hide layers. So if I didn't want to see the, I just want to see the circle by itself, I can just click off it. I didn't delete anything. I just hit it. And the other important thing is if you had everything set up perfect on a layer, you might want to lock it. So this is the lock right here. So as soon as I hit the lock, if I try to do something to it, like color, I can't do anything to it. I could go to this layer though and work on it but this top layer is locked. So just some ways to manage your layers uh, and understand how when you put them on top of each other and how you can just work more efficiently on it. So let's move forward and let's start making a thumbnail with some text uh, for this Krita uh, YouTube video. So now I'm going to make my thumbnail for this video with the different things that I've showed you so far and a few extra. First thing is I'm going to bring in a uh, background here. So I want to do it as a new layer. It's an image. I don't want to keep this as white. So this is 1920 by 1080p, the right aspect for a thumbnail. And I'm just going to go ahead and go layer and uh, where is it? So layer import and import layer. So what this does, this is the one I want to bring in. So I'm just going to double click on this and, and bring it in. And you can see what happened is it brought it in as a new layer. But this isn't the right size right here and I need to resize this. So the transform tool, what I showed you before, if I go ahead and just drag the corner, I'm going to stretch it out, make sure none of the white is showing and I'll just click off of it and it's completely filled. So that's the first thing I wanted to bring in. I'm going to just make a brand new layer here. And what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to add a rectangle to this one. So I'm actually going to rename this one here and I'm just going to call it REC like so. And I'm going to use this tool, uh, the selection tool, and I'm going to make a, a rectangle here and I want to fill it. So I'm going to go actually to this bucket and I want it black. So if I click at it though, notice it doesn't fill solid and I want it to be solid. I'm just going to undo a step. The reason why it kind of, it didn't fill solid because of the background on it. But if I go ahead and hide this for a second and then fill it, there's my solid and I can put this back and it's still on a layer on top of this one. I can move this around if I have that layer selected. I can get this in the right spot like so. And again, I can adjust this going back. I can transform uh, this if I wanted a different size. If I need to make it longer or wider, I can make those to it. So the other thing, uh, so now I want to bring in the logo and I could bring it in the same way as the, as I showed you before, import as a layer. The other thing you can do, if I go to the internet here, here's the logo. If I go ahead and go copy image and I go back over uh, to my program and open it, I'm just going to go uh, select, deselect here and I uh, edit and paste it in and as web and I could control V that but and there it is like so. Notice it has the black edge around it here as I copy pasted it through. I can get rid of that in a hurry if I just use this selection tool and click on it. Now the black is selected and all I'm going to do is hit delete on my keyboard and it's gone. So it's created a brand new layer when I brought this one in. So if I go here and if I just write logo like so, so I can keep things organized. I could move this around if I wanted it uh, over, oh, I'm gonna hit select, deselect here, and now I can move it around. I can also resize this. So this time I'm gonna use my shift key to uh, shrink it down because I want to keep it the aspect uh, constraint uh, because I don't want it to make it an oval. If I hold the shift key down, it kind of, it will stop it from becoming that oval and it's, I just have to drag it in quickly. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger and I might adjust these things after, before I upload it. So I'm going to uh, move it over slightly. Okay. So now the next thing, what I want to do is insert some text into this here. So I, here's the text tool here. I'm going to go ahead, click on it, and I'm just going to put that in there. This is where we uh, select our style and everything. So I need to write Krita in here and I need to make sure black on black doesn't show. So white here, I'll just hit save. You can see it pop up really, really small. I need this a lot bigger. Uh, 72 even won't be big enough for what I want. So I'm gonna go to, uh, let's say 230 and hit save. I think that will do again. I might make some adjustments after. I'm gonna change my font here to something else. I'll just pick this one 
and hit save. You can see the changes that are made to it. Now I could go through and you know bold it and do different things with it, but this serves the purpose what I want right here. So if I hit save uh, and close on this one, and now I can go ahead and I can move it into the place that I want. Uh, one thing I want to show you, if you want to add effects to the font, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do this, but then take it away because I don't want it for this one, but I'm gonna just hide a few things here. So right now I do have my font, but it's white on white. If I go ahead up to layers and layer style, and notice what happens when I go ahead and click on drop shadow. You can see it right now because it went around the white. So I can click on this and I can make adjustments of the angle if I make these adjustments. And then you can see if I wanted to bevel and emboss, I can click on that and how things change through it. So you can make these adjustments to it. It affects anything on that layer. So I only have the text on that layer. So that's what the style is being applied to. But if I had shapes and everything, that would happen too. I'm just going to cancel this and bring this back up. And so I think the only thing I'll I will probably add to this is I'll put beginners tutorial underneath it but let's say I'll just save this for now uh, to get on to the next part with uh, pictures and everything when you save this so I could save this if I go ahead and hit save and save this as a credit document then I can open it up all my layers will be there um, and I could keep working on it but when it's done I can't load a credit document up for YouTube so it would have to be like a JPEG or, or PNG and if you had your transparent background background you would want it to be a PNG but you can see all the uh, the drop downs here so if I wanted this as the PNG and if I all just call this uh, thumb for now and I hit save and then I can go through and select the compression rate I'm just gonna leave this the same and I have that saved so you can pick the type uh, the style that and how you want it to be saved so as I said, this will be kind of my thumbnail that I'll upload for this video. I'm going to tweak it a little bit here, but let's move on to the next part and last part just with manipulating a photo uh, to compare it to kind of like some of those things that Photoshop can do. Lastly, what I want to show you is some photo editing. So I'm going to go back to the picture here that I started with. All the things that I showed you with different brushes and the selection tools will work with a photo. You can color on top of it, uh, just like I did with the other one. But these are a little bit different. These tools work great for uh, dealing with photos. So the first thing is the crop tool is always a good one with photos and it's right here. Super easy to use. Click on it. Click where you want to start your crop, hold down, it lightens the area. When you get what you want, then just hit enter on it and then you have it. And you can resave this photo and you'll have that, just that part of the photo. I'm going to undo. Uh, another cool tool is this one right here. So this is the smart patch tool. So I'm going to zoom up on this right here, this cathedral. And what I'm going to do is go to the smart patch tool click on it. Now you can see how big the circle is. I can change the size, but this will be good. This will fit what I want. If I go over top of this and just click, it turns pink and then wait, it's gone. So it was able to take a similar background, maybe in the same plane and replace it uh, with the, the sky and everything to match it. So I could try, uh, let me try a other thing here. So maybe this garbage can right here. So if I go to it and click on it, and see what happens and it's gone. Now, sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how complicated of a replace. It works good with blemishes on faces and different things. Change the size of the brush to get more detailed in different places like that. Now, a few more tools that I just wanna show you are listed uh, under the brushes actually. And sometimes with other programs, they'll be part of the toolbar. But if I go to the brush here and I just drop down and I have all the brush, brushes being shown. So if you don't see these, make sure you have the all selected. Now here's the clone tool right here. So the clone tool makes a copy, uh, similar to what was happening with the patch tool, but I'll just click off of it. I'll zoom up. So you can see, let's say if I have these three people right here and I wanna make a copy, you can see how the X is, how I brought the X over it. I'm gonna hold control and click so i've made a i've made a mark where i want it to copy from so now if i go over here hold my mouse down i'm going to actually copy them right over here like so so it created a copy of them over here so it's something uh we'll do this again here so if i go over this person right here and i hold control down to mark it i click 
and I'm going to put this person try over here and then I just bring so this one right here didn't work quite as good because I wasn't around the edge and the background's a little different but that's how you can make uh, a clone now a couple other things in these brushes to take a look at if you drop down you can see that if you uh, go over top this is the grow so the grow what it would do I can again change the size of my brush if I I get as I click on it you can see the object grow now depending on how I change the brush size it's going to alter it and if I go back and drop down, you can see now we have uh, distort as another one. So if I go and you can see how I can kind of pull these people around here. And if I go back here and look at the other ones, I have a shrink also. So I can go and I'll zoom up here. Let's shrink, uh, we'll just shrink this person right here. As I hold down and click, it makes the person smaller on here so click and smaller as you can see it does make it a bit blurry but depending on uh, how exact you're getting in the brush sizes and different things but just some things that you can do with a photo uh, whether for fun or just to make them fix different things using some of those tools so do play with uh, Krita this was just a beginner's tutorial just to walk through to show you uh, some of the key fun things how it does compare to Photoshop it can do a lot more if you're artistic the brushes and everything and the uh, the tool, the things that you could draw would be really powerful, I think. And plus, it's all free and goes on across many different operating systems. So uh, I hope you like this. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I make these weekly tech tips. I'm going to do more on the free software for photo editing or painting like this. So make sure you stay tuned. Thanks for watching this week, and I'll see you next time on Teacher's Tech.